Well, hello there, dear viewers and dear listeners, and thank you for joining Greg and I in our second episode of 15 Minutes with Greg and Michelle, where we talk about the unseen process of recruiting, right? And where, where you find out what happens after you click submit. Right, Greg? Yeah, I think today will be a nice uh, ghost busting post Boston session. Yes, so, it will be. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me again. How are you? Oh, geez. Come on. We're in this together. I'm doing well. Thanks. Mm -hmm. The family's good. Everyone's good. Everyone's doing well. That's Thank awesome. You for asking. How about yourself? Same here. Same here. No complaints. No complaints. So today we're going to talk about a term that you actually enlightened me on called ghost busting. But first, let's talk about the term ghosting. What does ghosting mean in the area of recruiting, Greg? So ghosting in the area of recruiting would be, and it's a two-way road, where a candidate does not respond back to the hiring manager or the recruiter and vice versa. The recruiter or hiring manager does not respond or answer the candidate anymore. They just disappear. I think that oh. phrase came from modern data apps where people are ghosted. Yeah, that's not a good thing. I mean, on either side. Now, the applicant is used to being ghosted for all intents and purposes, right? The, the, the recruiter may have every legitimate reason why he cannot respond right away. But, 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 it's the, it's the onus on the applicant to be as responsive as possible. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I can't justify for either side. Okay. Uh, I don't think anyone should be ghosted for whether you're a candidate ghosting the hiring manager or you're the hiring manager ghosting the candidate or applicant. Um, both have a responsibility in that process to have communication. Um, Key word that you used, applicant. So you're applying for a job. You're actively looking for a job. You're engaged in maybe that process. Um, if you found something that's great, but I guess we'll cover more into that uh, a little further down. Okay, all right. So you, you ready to get right into it? Let's do it. So what causes ghosting? Let, let's just start, remember, we're coming from the eyes of what happens in, in behind the scenes, right? So an applicant mm -hmm. submits their, um, their resume. Okay, it's in the hands of the recruiter. What happens? How does ghosting happen? Okay, so it could be on a, that's a multifold answer. Ghosting could happen for a variety of reasons from the hiring side. One may be an organization just does not have the proper resources in place to acknowledge every application that comes through. Um, another time an organization may just have had to post that role for protocol. They have an internal candidate and process says that they have to post a job for two weeks, three weeks, whatever it is to collect applicants. Um, a lot of times companies may have made a hire already and they just Again, then the process is not proper where they actually reach out to let people know the job is filled or whatever the reason may be that they're not getting a screening. Um, and then the final reason is just, you know, people are people. Uh, things can fall between the crack or uh, sometimes roles are just posted just to post them. Uh, <laughs> build up pipelines and that's, you know, there's a million other reasons. <laughs> That's right. And these are the unseen reasons, right? When an applicant submits yep. their resume, you know, they don't, for all intents and purposes, they're like, okay, that's fine, but I submitted, you should respond. So we're giving you insight into what happens on the other side, right? Now let's talk about yep. the applicant side of ghosting. Well, just to back up on that side, I think the biggest thing I could always say for an applicant is not to feel, not to take it personal. Yes. Um, I think a lot of times I hear that they don't hear back from someone or everything's so automated or they don't even get acknowledgement. I know for our own processes, we send acknowledgement for everything that comes through. We'll send a rejection email um, and letting them know and people just appreciate it. Uh, it goes a long way just to let someone know, hey, you're not right for this role or this role was filled or this role was closed out. Um, that's all people look for, it's communication. Now on the other side to your question. Yeah. Um, so. So, right, so when my clients submit their resume for positions, right, if they don't hear right away, there's a tendency to say, oh, I'm never going to hear from them, or, oh, I'm not going to follow up. Yeah, 
D don't do that. Why? Why, Greg? What are your suggestions? Um, I always say there's a good balance on follow up. Uh, since I'm coming from the agency side, mm -hmm. uh, we have an incentive to place a candidate. Uh, we're not getting paid unless that candidate gets a job. So a lot of times uh, I try to stress to a candidate, we have submitted you over to a client and your resume is under consideration. We're not withholding information. Our goal is to get that process moved along as quickly as possible. Um, unfortunately, sometimes clients, the hiring companies are just slow or they have a million other things on their plates. Um, but I always say there's a good balance to at least stay in front of the person you're working with. When you're going directly to a company, there's nothing wrong with a follow-up maybe, you know, a week after you submitted a resume or if it's a smaller company, find the person on LinkedIn and just, hey, I submitted my resume, I want to confirm you received it, as long as you're confident you're a fit for that role. Right, right, right. Okay, so you've touched a lot that we could clearly go into two hours alone on one yes. topic, <laughs> but I'm going to just hone in on two things you just said. Follow up in a week, right? Mm -hmm. A week, I think is, I think a week is good. A week is good, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think it's fair. Okay. And when you communicate via LinkedIn, make sure that you're qualified for the job, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I think this goes back to last week, consideration of the other person's time. Um, if you're applying for a role, you want to make sure you're taking, you're reaching out now and going an extra mile there should be every reason why you're going that extra mile. You're hundred percent qualified for the role or even 95% qualified. You check all the boxes on the bottom. Um, that will at least maybe your resume got lost in the process. Maybe they just got inundated with a million resumes, but it will at least distinguish you if you are qualified. If you're unqualified, it could kind of be a nuisance at times because it's like you're not suitable for the role. Um, and now you're taking attention away from other candidates that are suitable for the role. Right. So, so let's talk about that little nuance of sure. re reaching out to someone via LinkedIn, right? You feel you're qualified, you reach out to them, you don't hear anything. What do you do next? At that stage, apply for the next job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're saying if you don't hear back from them, if they're, if, if they're being unresponsive, there's probably a good reason for it, right? Yeah. I mean, I always say that beginning process is the first impression of a company. Um, if that company does not value the in potential employee's time, is that a company you want to work for? Um, it's a mutual respect. I think that's a great point, Greg. That's a great point. Now, Greg, you had told me a story in one of our conversations about applicants who ghost. Tell us about that. Yeah. Then there's the other side of it. Um, applicants that ghost us in the process. Uh, recently I had one, we confirmed an interview and, um, here we are a week later waiting to make sure that this person's doing their interview tomorrow. Oh. Uh, candidates sometimes fail the need not to give the courtesy back to let us know as simple as I'm not interested anymore. And when I say ghost, we have reached out, we email, we call, we'll text from multiple different numbers just to get a sense that they're okay. Um, usually we give the benefit of the doubt that maybe something unfortunate happened. Maybe someone got sick, maybe someone got hurt um, because we do believe that people are uh, courteous enough to give that response to us to say, I'm not interested or I found another role. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Giving someone the benefit of the doubt, I think is fair. Um, now here's, here's, here's where you and I, we wholeheartedly agree that, Regardless what the agency does or the company does, the onus is on the client to make sure they engage in conversation and do everything they can, right? Don't mm -hmm. ghost because if there's another position that that company is putting forth, they're going to remember you from your previous action, right? Greg, you want to expand on that? Sure. So recruiters and companies, um, both, as we mentioned last week, we use technology. We keep track of applications that are coming through. If Candidate ghost us, there's usually a note that says unresponsive and uh, put a note in, you know, multiple attempts. Usually a lot of things are tracked and logged. So whoever it is, we'll see multiple emails. We usually try to give a second chance, um, depending on the situations, but a lot of companies don't. After they get burnt once or they feel like this candidate's not going to work or embarrass them, 
They, they don't want it, especially for a recruiting side, for an agency. This is a representation of us. We don't want to put someone in the process, get them scheduled for an interview, and then 10 minutes before the interview, this person still is not answering, and then time of the interview does not show up. Yeah, so I think the common denominator that I'm hearing from you, Greg, is that, you know, you, you know you're, you're the agency, you're the company, but you also want to make sure that your reputation is intact, just like I'm sure the applicant is, right? So it's a two-way street. It's 100% two-way street. Um, a company like us, which is a family, you know, small boutique firm, uh, we only have our reputation. That's, we don't have shareholders. We don't have um, a huge marketing budget where we're putting out television ads or um, radio ads. It's word of mouth and reputation. Candidates too, they, they have to realize a lot of markets are very small. So it's very easy to tarnish your reputation based on the way you handle interviews, job application processes, and just handle yourself at different companies. Right, right. So we've got we've got about five minutes left. So let's talk sure. about other aspects of how we can ghost bust or ghosting that comes to mind, Greg. What else do you feel our listeners and viewers should know about this sad reality of <laughs> applying for a job? It's, I mean, it, it, it's it's an emotional process. Um, people apply for different reasons. Most of the times you're applying because you're not happy in your role. Uh, it could be for hostility reasons. It could be for uh, work-life balance. So there's a lot of emotion going into this process of applying for a job and looking, um, especially if you're someone that's worked at a company for a long time. It's a huge emotional attachment to that organization and to say, hey, I need to go look for something else. Um, so I would always be conscious of the fact that if you are working um, and you are being ghosted, that's fine. Something will come along. Uh, just keep your head up and don't take it personal. Um, not everything is perfect. Uh, there's always a human behind some aspects, so there could be mistakes, but just uh, always keep it a two-way road. Uh, I go with the golden rule treat people the way you want to be treated. Absolutely. Now, I'm just going to go back to um, your, a remark you made about rejection notices and how they go out if the person, if the applicant mm -hmm. doesn't end up being a good fit, right? I don't take that as like a slam of the door, never contact again. I take it as, you know what, this role didn't work. I, I, I suggest that they, that clients stay engaged, excuse me, um, applicants stay engaged with the recruiter. What are your thoughts about that? 100% agree with that. Um, for example, our rejection notices, I, I don't even like using that word because I think yeah. that's a harsh word. Um, our notices to let someone know that they're not qualified for the position always says at the end of it, we will consider them for anything that comes up that could be suitable. And I know a lot of reputable companies that aren't recruiting firms as well. They usually will say, we'll consider you for future positions. Feel free to check back in a few months. Um, There's nothing wrong with keeping your options open with that company, especially if you really like them. Um, if you handle yourself properly throughout that process and you engage right, a lot of times companies will remember that. Um, and, and that goes beyond, again, the recruiting firm. I've worked with plenty of companies where they've interviewed someone, they like them, they just didn't have the right role for them at the time. And a few weeks later, a few months, they would reach out and say, hey, is so-and-so available? We'd love to hire them. That's right, that's right. Okay, so with um, a little bit over two minutes left, what suggestions would you give someone who's following up with an, a recruiter on one being rejected and and wanting to maintain contact? What or, what should they tell them? And two, um, just uh, if they haven't heard anything back about a job, let's say they have they went further into the process and then they didn't hear anything back. What to, what to say and what not to say? Sure. I mean, a lot of times if you went further into the process and you interviewed and maybe went for a final interview um, and it goes silent, A, they, may, they could have made another selection. B, they could be in the process of making an offer to someone and waiting for an acceptance. We've seen that happen. Okay. Um, the best thing I always say to people is patience. Uh, a, a, slow, you know, a slow yes is better than a fast no. It's something my father's always taught us. Oh, I like that. Wait, repeat that again, please. A slow yes is better than a fast no. Okay, I like that. So, um, 
just just keep in mind the balance. I can understand if you're excited about a role, sometimes you're eager, um, which is perfectly fine. Just be conscious of everyone's time. Be conscious that it is a process. Um, you are probably not the only candidate a lot of times in the process. So other people are going through it too. They may still be doing interviews. They may have uh, X amount of people they have to see before they can move forward, or they could just be internal reasons going on. Maybe they have a project they're caught up on, or they're waiting for approval on something. It could be a variety of reasons. Um, if time goes on really long, I'm just gonna go back to what I said earlier. Is that the company you wanna work for? If they could take your time, send you out, make you sit through an interview. And I know nowadays interviews are very long and extensive for some companies and not even give the courage to say, hey, we selected someone else. Then and they, they, may not, they may not be worth you. And, and, and you know what, Greg? I'll, we'll give ourselves a bonus of one extra minute, two minutes. Love why? <laughs> because we didn't talk about networking and why it is important to network. Why does networking beat ghosting? networking beats ghosting for the exact reason you're networking you're expanding your contacts you're exposing yourself you're actually adding a personal touch to the process you're not a piece of paper anymore you're not a resume you're not a name in a database you're a face um, same thing works every way possible you do marketing what's the best thing to do you get on the phone with someone you get on a zoom with them because now you're not just Michelle, you're not just Greg. You're actually a face. You've had a conversation. You've added some emotion to the process. Networking, same thing. We've met plenty of candidates just through networking events that weren't looking, and we may have found a job that just was a match, and it wound up being a passive opportunity for someone. That's right, Greg. And so specifically in reference to ghosting, right, let's say, for example, an applicant applies for a job, and it's already been filled or it's about to be, someone else is about to be considered for it. When you network, you get ahead of that because you'll probably get privy to a job that hasn't been technically created yet or, or distributed yet, right? Yeah, you could be that candidate that is under consideration and that role is posted because they want to hire you and they need just to put a two week posting out. Somewhere. There you go. There you go. There you go. You know, so there is a system to it. There is a process. And, um, yep. you know, Greg, I think that your perspective and your feedback will be helpful to a lot of folks in terms of this space. You know, we know a lot of job seekers out there want a job, but it's how you get it and what you do. Right. So that's why we put together this, this series of uh, informative sessions. Right, Greg? Yeah, I mean, everything happens for a reason. I tell people that all the time. Um, best thing you could do is just realize something will come along when the time's right. Uh, one, I mean, again, I'm a big believer in destiny. One door closes, another one opens. I agree, Greg. I agree. Well, okay. Well, we ran a little over, but it's okay. It's okay. We touched on some really important parts. It was interesting. <laughs> it was interesting. And you know what, Greg? I would think about it. Like, why didn't I meet you when I was applying for some jobs? You would have probably really taken good care of me, right, Greg? We try to with everyone that comes to us. Amen to that. Amen to that. Okay, so we're going to close this episode. Time went incredibly fast. Next week, we're going to join some folks from ACG, right? The, your staff. We're going to bring them in. We're going to have a nice conversation on some serious, hardcore aspects of uh, recruiting, right, Greg? The unseen process. I think we'll get uh, two different perspectives next week on the hiring process. Since All I've been right. A recruiter, so. I'm ready. I'm ready, yeah. Greg. I hope you guys are ready too. We'll see you next week. Thank you.